If you had to choose one, would you choose speed or accuracy? I feel the need, the need for speed. Ow! Both speed and accuracy have their place in gun ownership and self-defense. It doesn't matter how many years you've been shooting for. What matters more is the type of training you receive and the practice you engage in. 99% of my students want to learn how to defend themselves. Most are beginners, but many have been shooting for years and have limited skills outside of shooting at static targets at the range. It's therapeutic. If your accuracy is spot on at the range, that's a great start. We ought to be consistently accurate in a static, non-threatening setting before we engage in more dynamic training. You're relaxed. No one is rushing you or rushing at you. You can take your time on every shot and choose the distance you're comfortable with. The target will patiently wait and let you hit it as many times until you're satisfied with the result. <sighs> that sounds like heaven. However, in a dynamic situation that comes unannounced and is over in seconds, this limited set of skills will often not be enough. I knew it was too good to be true. The stress and pressure are immense. Your body feels and acts very differently. Your target is moving and it is real threat. There are so many things to consider and no time to do it and your life and or the life of someone you may love are on the line. The accuracy and speed you enjoyed at the range are very unlikely. And unless you learn the proper role each one plays in such a scenario and trained accordingly, consistently and deliberately over time, you'll find it almost to be a completely foreign experience. So let's examine how speed and accuracy play a role using two self-defense scenarios. Scenario number one, home invasion. It's 2 a.m. You're awakened by the sound of broken glass. You hear glass crackling under the footsteps of the intruders. You grab your gun and flashlight and tell your significant other to hide in the closet. You assume a defensive position behind the dresser and wait. Your firearm is pointing at the bedroom door and your flashlight is ready to be turned on. You hear the doorknob turning and the door creaking open. A silhouette appears in the doorway. You turn on the flashlight and notice a masked man you do not recognize standing there, gun in hand, and trying to shield his eyes from the blinding light beam of the flashlight. You quickly adjust your aim and fire two shots to the intruder's center mass. The intruder falls to the ground. You keep your firearm pointed at the crook for a few more seconds as you slowly emerge from behind cover. You check with your significant other that they're okay. You then approach the invader slowly, kick their gun away, and call 911 if you haven't already. In this particular scenario, what mattered more, speed or accuracy? Let me think this through. Well, accuracy does. Yes, you need to recognize that something isn't right fairly quickly. You need to stage the defensive posture quietly and in a timely manner so as to be ready and maintain the element of surprise. Goody, I love surprises. But in this scenario, especially if you have a pre-planned protocol, speed isn't the determining factor. Once you are ready, it's about waiting for the intruder to walk through a narrow door at which you are already aiming, identifying the threat with your flashlight and pulling the trigger. You can pull this off with good fundamental gun handling skills as long as you can stay relatively composed. We've got to keep our composure! The physiological and psychological parts of the equation are another story and beyond the scope of this video. Scenario number two. You just finished dinner with your family. You all head out together. Your car is parked behind the restaurant. As you approach your car, you press the unlock button on your key fob to open the doors. As soon as your car lights flash, a man jumps out from behind another car, grabs one of your kids by the arm, and tries to run off with her to another car idling by and ready to speed off. Your wife begins to scream and starts to run after them. You know that if your kid gets in that car, you'll likely never see her again. What do you do? What matters more now, speed or accuracy? I have a feeling you're about to tell me. Here is a hint. Speed without accuracy is almost useless. I say almost because oftentimes, when legally justified, brandishing a firearm alone can deter an assailant and stop a threat. So presenting your firearm from concealment or open carry swiftly may do the trick. That's when speed alone is preferred. But in this case, you need both and at a very high level of skill. The kidnapper is not looking at you, so brandishing alone is useless. You have but a few seconds to stop him reaching the waiting car 
and taking your kid with him. Man, that's easy said than done. The only thing faster and stronger is a bullet, and it may take more than one. You have to present your firearm quickly while on the move, and then, whether you stop or keep moving, get enough accurate shots on target and drop him before he reaches the car, all while making sure your wife and kid are not hit and no other bystander aside from the kidnapper's driver is hit either. Maybe we should just call the police. In this scenario, you need both speed and accuracy. I can tell you from experience that the average gun owner doesn't have that level of training, and that level of training takes years to develop. Well, I don't have that much time, so I think I'll take my chance. However, in my humble opinion, accuracy ought to be the priority before speed comes into play. If you prioritize speed, you'll develop bad habits that may and very likely will become dangerous. Whether you're a recreational shooter or prioritize defensive gun use, safety must be considered. Accuracy is a major component of defensive gun use, especially under the extreme stress of a real-life violent attack. Accuracy gives you an opportunity to stop the threat with less shots fired and less of a chance of an errant bullet to harm an innocent bystander. My video on how the four golden rules of gun safety apply while you're under attack will dive deeper into that. Being able to maintain composure, slow down, and get effective and decisive shots on target in the midst of chaos is what I believe we ought to strive for. Then, as our accuracy improves, we can increase the speed at which we perform any given drill. However, do not compromise safety in the process. Perform drills as fast as you can do so safely and without sacrificing acceptable accuracy. If your accuracy suffers whereby your shots are ineffective, and you're missing the target, dial it back down. Yeah, that's not happening. Don't let your ego get in the way. I'm confident you've heard the term, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. There's a lot of truth in that, but don't despair. The more you train deliberately and consistently over time, the faster and more accurate your slow and smooth become. If you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and watch the next video right here. Train hard, often, and safely. And I'll see you at the range.